Welcome to Mikun's hardware. Recently Xeon E5 2620v3 has got up in price and now you can buy it for about 20 euros. But Xeon E5 1620v3 has got a price cut. Now you can also find it for about 20 euros. Thus, these two CPUs are available on AliExpress for about the same price. That's why in this short video I'm going to compare these two CPUs and validate what is the best budget option for the Intel LJ2011 version 3 or X99 platform. To make this comparison a little bit more interesting, I'm also adding my Xeon E5 2620v4 into the mix. First, let's take a look at the few technical things. Xeon E5 1620v3 has 4 cores, 8 threads, frequency 3.5 to 3.6 GHz. Unfortunately, this CPU has locked multiplier and it's not possible to overclock it as its younger brother E5 1620. But it means that you can apply Turbo Boost Unlock procedure with this CPU. The benefit of such procedure is very doubtful. The base frequency of the CPU is 3.5 GHz, while the turbo frequency is 3.6 GHz. Thus, the difference will be just 100 MHz. In this test, I will be testing E5 1620v3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock applied. Because E5 2620v3 was also tested with Turbo Boost Unlock, and I want to make it to be a, some kind of a fair comparison. E5 2620v3 has 6 cores, 12 threads, with the Turbo Boost Unlock all CPU cores are working at the frequency of 3.2 GHz. E5 2620v4 has 8 cores, 16 threads, CPU frequency 2.1 to 3.0 GHz. Unfortunately, with all Xeon E5 v4 CPUs, it's not possible to apply the Turbo Boost Unlock hack, and under low, this CPU will downclock itself way below 3 GHz. All three CPUs were tested with Huanan GX99 TF motherboard, and for memory sticks, this time I have picked cheap option, which is 4 sticks, 8GB each, DDR4-2133, ECC registered memory from Samsung. With the Xeon E5 1620v3 and 2620v4, the memory was working as DDR4-2133 CL12. E5 2620v3 supports maximum memory speed of DDR4-1866, but the timings were tightened to CL10. The rest of the components are NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, Samsung 860 EVO 1TB, EVGA Supernova 750P2. Let's start this comparison with the Cinebench R20, single-core and multi-core results. As expected, Xeon E5 1620v3 is taking the first place when using just one CPU core and the last place when using all CPU cores. E5 2620v4 and v3 are showing almost identical results, even though E5 2620v4 has two extra CPU cores, 7 zip compression and decompression. Here E5 1620v3 takes the last place. It's about 25% slower than E5 2620v3. E5 2620v4 is about 5-8% faster than its v3 equivalent. Blender Open Data, BMW and Classroom Benchmarks. Here E5 2620v4 and E5 2620v3 are again demonstrating very similar results. E5 1620v3, even though it has slightly higher CPU clock frequency, is slower than E5 2620v3 by 34 and 37%. Puget Systems DaVinci Resolve Benchmark, 1080p and 4K tests. Here all three CPUs are demonstrating very similar level of performance. E5 2620v3 is taking the first place once again. E5 2620v4 is slightly slower, just 2% and E5 1620v3 loses 2 and 13% to E5 2620v3. Handbrake, encoding a DaVinci Resolve created video, 21 minutes length from 4K to 1080p and 1440p for YouTube upload. E5 2620v3 is taking the first place, E5 2620v4 and 1620v3 are taking about the same time. Both of the CPUs were 9 and 15% slower than E5 2620v3. Now let's take a look at a few games. All the games were tested with RTX 2080 Ti, 1080p screen resolution and maximum graphical settings. Battlefield 5. E5 2620v3 is taking the first place once again. E5 2620v4 and 1620v3 are demonstrating almost identical results. 1% low value is about 8% slower than E5 2620v3. Average FPS is about 5-9% slower. Far Cry New Dawn. In this game I was expecting E5 1620v3 to take the lead, but E5 2620v3 is still taking the first place. The last place is taken by E5 2620v4, which has very low CPU clock frequency. It looks like 4 CPU cores is simply not enough, even for such games as Far Cry. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 
Once again, if i2620 v3 takes the first place, if i2620 v4 takes the last place by minimal FPS and if i1620 v3 takes the last place by average FPS. Both of the CPUs were about 10% slower than if i2620 v3 with Turbo Boost Unlock. Red Dead Redemption 2. This is a very demanding and a bit weird game. It uses Vulkan API and here if i2620 v4, which has significantly lower CPU clock frequency, is overtaking if i1620 v3. If i2620 v3 is still taking the first place, beating if i2620 v4 by a few percent on average and by 11% by minimal FPS. If i1620 v3 loses to if i2620 v3, 21 and 8%. F1 2019, one more game which really appreciates CPU clock frequency. Nevertheless, if i2620 v3 still takes the first place, if i1620 v3 loses 6 and 8%. If i2620 v4 takes the last place, it's about 15% slower than if i2620 v3. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. This is a fairly new and very well optimized as well as very demanding title. Here we can see that an 8-core CPU with a much lower CPU clock frequency is able to beat a quad-core CPU with a high frequency. If i1620 v3 takes the last place, it was 25 and 15% slower than if i2620 v3, while if i2620 v4 was about 10 and 5% slower than if i2620 v3 when it comes to 1% low and average FPS. This game demonstrates that the CPU frequency is getting less and less important, but it also demonstrates how pathetic Xeon E5 v4 CPUs are in comparison to Xeon E5 v3 CPUs. This all comes to the fact that Xeon E5 v4 do not support Turbo Boost Unlock, and most of them have quite low CPU clock frequency. The last test for this video will be 3D Mark. Here I test Time Spy, which uses DirectX 12 API, and Fire Strike, which uses DirectX 11 API. Much to my surprise, if i2620 v4 takes the first place with the time spy, if i2620 v3 is just 6% behind, and if i1620 v3 is another 26% behind. In Fire Strike, though, if i2620 v3 is taking the first place as expected, if i2620 v4 is just 1% behind, and if i1620 v3 is 20% behind. With this comparison, I can conclude that Xeon E5 2620v3 is still the best budget game in CPU for Intel LJ2011 version 3 platform. Even though its price has risen up to 20 euros, there is still no other better alternative. E5 2620v3 is an interesting option, but the CPU has to go down in price to about 10 euros to be relevant for this comparison. Xeon E5 v4 CPUs are still being sold for very high prices, which is completely unreasonable, but even if the prices go down, it will be really hard to recommend these CPUs because they do not support Turbo Boost Unlock procedure. Most of the v4 CPUs have quite low CPU clock frequency, and without Turbo Boost Unlock hack, they will be pretty much useless in comparison to the v3 option. For now, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.